Okay, so we got it all framed up here and I'm going to take you around now. We're going to look at all those obstacles with the framing applied and you can see how we framed around each and every one of those. I think it's eight obstacles. So let's get started. Obstacle number one, the electrical panel and the phone system and the alarm system. All that mechanical stuff back in that corner. Now obstacle one, we're going to be putting all that stuff inside a finished closet that we're going to build right in front of the panel box. When you open the door, you're going to see just what you're seeing inside there. It'll look exactly the same, except from this side, it'll look like a nice finished six panel door that'll match actually the door right beside it there. A nice finished six panel door that'll match all the doors in the rest of the house. So obstacle number one, we're going to be putting the electrical panel box inside an unfinished closet. Okay, so let's take a look at obstacle number one again. That was the panel box. Over here in the corner, as you recall, it was right near a window. And we also had decided to just put the sump pump, the window, and the panel box all in one unfinished utility closet. Okay, and remember our electric panel box. We put that inside an unfinished storage space, which is right behind this door. Inside here, we have about a six foot wide by three foot deep closet. We've got total access to the electric panel box and the alarm system. We can get in here and work on this panel box. We've got the required code distance in front of the panel box, which is three feet. We also captured the sump pump in here and the discharge line that goes up and outside. So we killed two birds with one stone in this unfinished space right here. And when we shut the door, from the finished side of the basement, it looks like any other door in the basement project. A nice finished six panel door. And when we go inside, we enter into our unfinished utility closet. So that's how we went around and finished the access to the electric panel and the sun pump. It turned out nice and clean. Obstacle number two, the south wall, rear wall uh, utilities, which include the water heater, the well equipment, and a washer and dryer. We're going to be putting all that inside a wall, uh, which we're going to call an unfinished closet, unfinished utility closet, which will have two doors to enter. Okay, obstacle number two. What we have here was the uh, south wall that had all those utilities in it. And what we did, as you can see there, we've got two four-foot doors going back into an unfinished utility area. It's going to look just like uh, the rest of the basement finished from this side of the wall when it's finished with nice new doors and drywall. But when you open either one of those four-foot doors and go inside, you're still going to see all the well equipment, the water heater on this side, and in the other four-foot door, you're still going to be able to get to the washer and dryer with full access. They're actually not functional washer and dryers, they're just in storage. So uh, you'll be able to get to everything in there, including that shelf unit, from, at, from the access that'll be created in that wall from the uh, two four-foot doors. Okay, now this is how our double four-foot door turned out. That enters into another one of our unfinished utility areas. As you recall, back behind these double doors right here, we hit away the water purification system, the water softener, and also the well system. All right, so all that utility is accessible through this four foot door. On the other side, we just kept it unfinished as well. It really serves as more unfinished space for storage. Still looks exactly the same inside as it did when we started the project. We still have that washer and dryer in here and some storage shelves. But what's great about these unfinished areas is you can hide them away inside oversized doors like we did here. All right, and these are four foot doors. Four foot doors that up top have the ball catches that snap up into these plates. All right, with the dummy knobs. These knobs don't turn, they're just, just for pulling purposes. And we hit away all that utility area inside those two four foot finished six panel doors. They look like every other door in the house. Again, a nice, clean, fresh look. Obstacle number three, the support poles. You can see three support poles here, one, two, and three. We're simply just gonna box these out, frame around them, drywall them, finish the bases with uh, base trim. Uh, the homeowner did not wanna do the half walls from the exterior wall over to the poles and between the poles. 
because they wanted to keep this area as open as possible, so we're just going to be boxing out those poles. So obstacle number three, the support poles, we're just going to box them out, frame around them, drywall them, and use trim to decorate them. Okay, obstacle number three was the support columns. One, two, three, and four at the base of the steps. So what we did is we boxed out these three by three poles, these three, these three inch support columns with two by eight. All right, you can see there's just two by eights. If you look close there, you can see the ram set pins that we use for my ram set gun. We just shot them right onto the steel. And there you can see the three inch steel column sandwiched in between there. We're just gonna wrap those with drywall, put some corner bead on them, finish them out, paint them, put some base trim and some chair rail and possibly some crown mold around the top. And we had three of those. We had this one out here. We had a pair of them right over here. All right, so obstacle number three, the support columns. Okay, obstacle number three here. All right, and we remember those support poles that were down in the basement. We had a couple of them. We had three out here in the middle. All right, two there, one right here. And we had one right at the base of the steps, which is inside that column that we built there with the light switches on it. This one also serves as the receiving end of our railing for our rosette for our banister system. All right, all those columns were just boxed out. We, show you, we showed you how we did that with the two by six framing. And then the drywallers come in and they just put four corner beads on each column and we finished out the base with the three and a half inch colonial base trim. But there's how we hid the four columns inside our frame. We boxed them out with two by six, drywalled them, and then just trimmed them out. Okay, obstacle number four is the stairway wall. The stairway wall right now is a closed wall. Uh, you can see there's no opening there. Take a walk around the front here. You can see it's just like a hallway effect coming down from the upstairs door. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking out this side of the wall up to the fifth step. One, two, three, four, fifth step, maybe the sixth step. Take the wall out completely, open it up, and we're going to be installing our traditional colonial handrail with spindles. All right, so obstacle number four. The closed stairway, we're going to be open that, opening that up to the fifth or sixth step and putting in our standard banister rail assembly system. Okay, obstacle number four. Open up the stairway to the sixth step. Now, as you recall, that wall there was framed the whole way down from the builder. It was drywalled as well. We went ahead and knocked out about six steps worth of that wall that was pre-existing, opened it up, Frame the angle of the stairs there, put a couple studs underneath. We're going to keep that open, and that's going to have a traditional handrail coming down with the decorative spindles every four inches in between, which will give us a little bit of the look of the upstairs to this home so we can carry that same uh, trim package down from the first floor of the house. Okay, and here's our next obstacle finished out. That was the stairway wall that was once closed up. When we got here, that was not opened at all there. We opened it up all the way up to the nose of the sixth step. All right, all the way up to the sixth step. Now we had a support column right at the base of the steps that we used and boxed out to receive the bottom of our handrail. And at the top, we just went to another rosette and to the sixth step wall. All right, with the colonial spindles and the trim and the nice pine cap, it turned out real nice and it opened up that stairway. So coming down the steps, once we get to the sixth step, you know, we have this added element here that makes it seem more like the rest of the home upstairs. The banister kind of opens it up, gives you a nice view into the basement before you even get to the bottom step. You know, and aesthetically, it's architecturally pleasing, and it definitely turns, you know, an ordinary, boring, old, regular stairway into a basement uh, into a beautiful thing. Okay, obstacle number five will be the ductwork that's on the ceiling. All right, you can see we've got a return air and a feed air trunk coming down from the furnace all the way down there. And right beside that ductwork, we go back up to the floor joists. We're gonna be boxing out all this ductwork in our standard soffit, but we're gonna frame around that, create a little bit of a lower ceiling right underneath all of it, and we'll hide it all the way in one neat soffit. From the furnace, the soft will run the whole way down 
to the window wall. Okay, obstacle number six was all that duct work that ran the whole way down the basement from the furnace clear down to that window wall. What we did was we built our soffit all around all that duct work and that's going to become a lower section of ceiling. You can see up above there's the floor joists. They're about 10, 11 inches higher. The drywall is going to be right to the bottom of them out here for a higher ceiling but where the duct work was we built this skeleton around that duct work all right, and we crossed underneath with the crossover framing every two foot and now we'll be able to drywall the bottom of that and hide all that ugly stuff up in there and there was there was pipes up in there and there was condensation line sets and copper and wires everything up inside there uh, all that stuff got hidden away in the same soffit and you can see on the bottom of that soffit we have the recessed lights we also had a wood support beam up in there uh, we had a, a three inch uh, sewage line up in there we had central vacuum tubing up in there all got swallowed up inside that soffit that runs from the outside wall all the way down to the furnace so obstacle number five the ductwork we hit it inside a frame soffit ceiling. Okay, now our ductwork that we had that went from the furnace wall, which is right behind that grate. We open up these doors right here. We can see we still have the furnace right inside here. Totally accessible. We can change the filter and operate on that furnace need be. And all the ductwork that went from that furnace the whole way down the center of our basement is now inside a soffit. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that the soffit is the lower section of ceiling that comes from the upper section up here, drops down about 10, 11 inches, and then goes down underneath. All right, our ductwork is inside that soffit that runs the complete length of the basement. Underneath, we do have several recessed lights in the bottom of the soffit ceiling to illuminate it under here because it's a little dark under these soffits if you don't put some lighting underneath. So it is about six feet wide from that side of the soffit over to this edge. So that's how we finished off the lower section of ceiling that had the duct work from end to end. We put it inside another one of our basement soffit ceilings. Okay, obstacle number six, and this is a common one. We've got three quarter inch and half inch copper strapped to the bottom of the floor joist in an area where we want a flat drywall ceiling. We also have wires, cable wires, alarm wires, all uh, tack to the bottom of the floor joist. What we're going to do to go around all of that so that we can get a flat drywall ceiling in this area is we're going to be we're going to be banding that out. All right, we're going to be using a framing technique called banding that'll bring us below all those copper pipes and all those wires. Okay, obstacle number six: the pipes and the wires overhead that were strapped to the bottom of the floor joist that were not permitting us to put the drywall up flush to the ceiling. We had to get below those pipes. You can see up there we had the copper pipes up here. Uh, we also had cable and we had all these speaker wires and just all kinds of stuff up there going in each direction. We had copper pipes coming down and turning and going left and right. All this stuff was strapped to the bottom of the floor joists. So what we did is we, uh, we used a technique for basement framing called banding. And that's what these long two by fours are here that you see going all the way down this side are. They're banding framing. And what that does is that brings down the framing for the drywall an inch and a half more than the floor joists overhead. And that gets our drywall below all these wires and all this copper right here all right now all that all those wires and all that copper will, will then just be up inside the ceiling safely tucked away inside our banding frame all right so if you've got pipes and wires going to the bottom of your floor joist don't worry there's an easy fix as long as they're not sticking down more than three quarters of an inch or an inch at the most you can simply shoot two by fours perpendicular, and you see your floor joists are going this way, shoot your 2x4 banding perpendicular to your floor joists every two foot, 
and that will allow you to get your drywall surface below all those obstacles. So obstacle number six, the pipes and the wires strapped to the bottom of the floor joist. We simply banded it out and now our drywall can go right underneath the new banding. Okay, and if we look up overhead here, we see vacuum line pipes. We see three quarter inch copper and cable TV wires and security alarm wires and all kinds of stuff heading across this unfinished space going right up over top of that wall. All right, all that stuff continues on right up over top of this door opening here and right out into our finished space. You can actually look up there and see the framing sticking out on the side of the wall. Those two by fours that you see right there, all right, one, two, three of them are heading in that direction and they go the whole way down this ceiling to the other end. That enabled our drywallers to put drywall to the bottom of those two by fours and give us a nice, clean, straight drywall ceiling out here. And none of those pipes or wires even matter. So that's how we went around all the pipes and wires. We used our banding framing and then we just drywalled the ceiling. Gives you a nice, clean, straight, professional look. No drop ceilings needed. Obstacle number seven, you can see it back in there. It's right inside those shelf units there, that big four inch pipe that's up there. All right, that is sticking away from the exterior wall about a foot, about 12 inches. And then you can see there's another piece of that pipe going up through the floor. So we're gonna box all that three inch sewage lateral pipe that's uh, a foot away from the wall, the whole way down and one soffit that's gonna go the whole way down to the window wall, all the way down to that end of the basement. All right, so that'll all be hidden away inside a soffit. And this is a real typical one. A lot of folks have this one. It's the three inch sewage pipe, the three inch lateral sewage pipe that runs along the top of an exterior wall. A lot of us have those. What we do is we just put that pipe inside a soffit that we build right off of that wall. Then you just build a soffit out in front of that pipe from the ceiling down. And we built that soffit from this end of the basement all the way across this office, right here to the doorway. And once we get through the doorway, we continued that office out here in the family room, because that pipe's still up in there, the whole way down to the window wall. Also up inside there, take a look. You can see there's a doorbell transformer up in there. Down the line a little further, there's a branch of that three inch pipe that comes off and comes out about 20 inches off the wall. So that's why we have this soffit ladder out off the wall 20 inches. We like to keep our soffit line straight. All right? We don't want to be going in and out, in and out. So since we had the furthest obstacle out here 20 inches, we made the whole soffit 20 inches out the whole way down. Even though this pipe is back here, you know, even though this edge didn't have to be out here this far for the pipe over here, once we got out here to this piece here, okay, once we got out to here, we had to bring it out. So we just made the whole soffit edge nice and straight. And that's something I do on all my basements. I keep long, straight, crisp lines so it all looks good and makes sense. We don't want a whole lot of in and outs and up and downs everywhere because then it starts to look more like a basement. And we don't want our framing to look like a basement. We want the framing when it's drywalled, when it's covered with the drywall to look like the rest of the house. I also wanted to point out I get a lot of questions about this, this one here too. What do you do if you've got the sewage pipe that runs right down the wall and sticks out? Maybe it has a clean out on it like this one right here. And that's a clean out cap there. Well, what we do, as you can see, is we just built a little 12 inch wall. There's your, there's your green bottom plate, 12 inches, 12 inches wide. Pan up here. Here's your top plate, it's 12 inch piece. Okay, and then we just put a stud on each side. That frames out the front, all right? And you build this little wall out past where the end of your pipe is, or the end of your clean that is. Now the sides, what we do is we just shoot another two by four up the back in line with this one, okay? So they can put a piece of drywall on the side to cover the side, they'll nail the drywall here, and they'll nail the drywall on right here. All right, so that's how we handle that obstacle right there, a vertical sewage line. We just box around it, make a column out of it, and drywall it. Okay, the sewage lateral pipe that ran the length of the basement is now up inside another soffit 
that comes about 24 inches off the back wall and up inside this soffit, which runs across this playroom here, right through this doorway, and out here continues the entire length of the basement all the way up there to that window wall. All right, that's how we hit away that three inch fat sewage lateral pipe that was right along that whole wall. We showed you that pipe in the before. We showed you how we framed out that soffit. And by just drywalling our soffit framing, we were able to bring that nice clean line the whole way down through into this room and right across and right down to the other end. And you may remember there was a big three and a half inch pipe that came down the wall here and had a clean out on it. You know, it was right inside here. We boxed that out. We showed you the framing. And that's how we hit a three inch pipe that runs from floor to ceiling. Pretty much the same way we do them when they're running along the whole, the whole wall, except here we do it vertically. We frame all the way up, we drywall it, dress out the bottom and matching, uh, you know, base trim right around. And it just turns out to look like a drywall column right against the wall. It's a clean look and it's the best way to go around three inch pipes that are close to the exterior wall to hide them so that you don't lose a lot of floor space. All right, we just step right out, frame around that, that pipe, a nice clean look, floor to ceiling. Turned out nice and clean. Okay, obstacle number eight, we've got a structural wood beam that goes from the stairway wall all the way across the basement to the exterior masonry wall. What we're gonna be doing to both of these beams is we're just gonna be building a soffit around them. We're gonna build a soffit ladder on both sides, cross underneath, and we're gonna drywall those beams inside soffits. Okay, and our final obstacle is the support beams that we're running across the length of the basement. Support beams would be, in this case here, these three wooden 2 by 10s that are nailed together. That's the beam that carries the, uh, the floor joist that holds up the house. Underneath those beams are these support columns that we boxed out. But to hide the beam itself, we just built one of those soffit ladders from one end of the basement all the way across all the way down the full length of the beam all right and we made that low enough that the drywall can pass right underneath the beam all right so the bottoms of these ladders for these soffits that we built are, are an inch and a half lower than the beam so we can get underneath here with our drywall okay and we built one of these what they're called soffit ladders. We built one of these soffit ladders on this side of the beam and on this side of the beam. So there's one on each side. And then we connected them to the beam with little blocks of wood up there that we shot to the beam. And then we shot into those blocks of wood and that keeps the sides of those ladders from ever moving. All right, so obstacle number eight, the wood support beam or your beams may be steel. Either way, it doesn't matter. You build the same exact structure. You build soffit ladders on both sides and then drywall it. Okay, and our final obstacle was that wood beam that went from the base of the stairs all the way across to the exterior wall. All right, started over there. It was actually uh, resting inside the exterior wall, the window wall, the one end. It came across, it was held up by one, two columns, which we boxed out and a third column that was right at the base of the stairs. We built a soffit around that, which we showed you in the before and the during. And there's what your finished product looks like, a nice, clean drywall beam. All right, so that's how we went around the obstacles on this particular project. We did it all with framing, smart framing. Framing hides the obstacles before the drywall. So you might have something that was in this basement down in your basement, and I'm hoping that this video answered a couple of questions for your project. In any case, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I got a lot more cool, good, useful videos coming your way. I'll see you in the next video.